Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 1.2.2. In this episode, I just recently noticed that colonization, the colonization base here uh, needs supplies. It looks like uh, supplies are expired for Jeb and Bill here. Interesting because it is within range of the colonization 3 base, that's the reactor actually, the reactor core, uh, which has 106 days so I don't know why they're not uh, sharing supplies with each other. But it doesn't look like they are because Jeb and Bill have, well, no, it says pilot here. I got a message saying that Jeb and Bill refused to work, but maybe, maybe they're all right and they are ready to work and it is sharing supplies. But uh, it is somewhat worrisome that we have the expiry of supplies here. Another thing is we need to supply our base on Minmus, that's what's going on here. Uh, before we do anything that takes more than 25 days for instance and it might be good to land a greenhouse module there too um, the actual contract mission that we have is one to do some science around Minmus well I say science but it's a recon scan with something called little brother surveillance camera so apparently we'll be spying on our Kerbals on Minmus but that's also supposed to carry some other instruments in this contract, it needs an antenna, can generate power, multi-spectral imaging platform, and solar particle collector. So the way I see it is we need at least three missions, supply for Moon, supply for Minmus, but we don't want to just send supplies. It'd be better to send something a little bit more useful. Um, these need fertilizer, our agricultural modules. They're completely useless now. They're full up on mulch. That's not a problem, but they can't they can't produce what they need without fertilizer. So we'll send supplies and fertilizer here, and we should try and send a greenhouse uh, with extra supplies to Minmus. But um, if they're all right here, and it seems like they are, they aren't turned into tourists or anything. Maybe I'll do that contract admission first. Let me see what I can build in the VAB and we'll decide from there. Actually, I just remembered our little supply master here. Uh, this supply master has a fertilizer tank and, and supplies that haven't been used yet. But it sort of landed over here in the middle of nowhere. It is within 150 meters of the colonization base as well. But it's probably not connected. We might need to connect it more directly to the base using a pipe. So I wonder if it has any pipe endpoints on it. We could remove the pipe from the carbonite mining thing since we're getting power from the top old reactor core. Let's, uh, we'll, we'll get to that eventually. We'll, we'll try and set that up right at some point. But yeah, let's move this closer to the base and uh, we need to be within 25 meters if you want to connect it up directly. And yeah, that might be a little bit touchy. And let's not go target. I mean, it shouldn't be very different from surface, but let's make sure we're on surface. And I don't know which direction is the direction of the base. I don't want to destroy this thing. Hmm. Okay. It doesn't have much TWR either. this way. Okay. Well, that's closer, but not quite close enough. Oop, bounce. Um, yeah, okay. Well, uh, more of that. More of that. Oop. I can't, well, I'm sort of condemning it to be unable to return to space though, which is a shame. Uh, that wasn't a very good one. I get the feeling I'm eventually going to do something horribly wrong here. Oh boy. 
something like that. Okay, that's the wrong direction. Maybe I can connect them in series. I wonder if there's a pipe endpoint on there, because I'm just messing around. Supply Master didn't uh, supply any any drills. Okay, so we may need to send some more drills. I think that's probably... we probably can't do anything with this right now until we get that settled. All right, well, so much for that idea. And it's clearly not using the fertilizer from this, even though it's within range. When It, it says one vessel shared, but it doesn't have that, um, whatchamacallit. Um, whatever part it is that allows them to share things, I guess. Zero efficiency. Well, now it's not saying no fertilizer. Now it's saying zero efficiency. Is that because there's nobody in there? Hmm. Let's see. Maybe maybe it was just because the supply module was too far away. Though it was within 150 meters. Let's see. But now they're both tourists. Okay. Um, why are they both tourists? Because they think that their supplies have been expired, even though the supplies are in range. And since they're tourists, they're not doing anything in this. Even if they could, uh, I don't know if the fertilizer would transfer. Mm. Okay. We need to send stuff over after all. It looks like it's not going to work out very well. Okay, well I've decided to edit the Supply Master and instead of having the fertilizer tank here, I've put a KIS container with lots and lots of drills, as many drills as our Kerbals could, well, okay, eight of them anyway. Um, eight survey stakes. I'm not entirely sure how to use these, but they were cheap and they stack, so I thought to uh, send them in there. I haven't done anything with extraplanetary launch pads yet, but apparently these are important, so uh, I'll throw them in and in the hope that maybe I'll eventually get to them. Six of the connect reports and two Communitron uh, DTS M1s. Uh, we really need to slap one on the base, you know, because it should have its own independent communication. So yeah. That's the idea. I moved the fertilizer tank to the bottom. These are two supply tanks here. So that's about it. Otherwise, no major changes. After all, the other one got to where it was going just fine. So I figure this will be all right. Um, looks like stuff is poking. Uh, I guess the, the, this container is a little bit taller than the old one, right? Because it used to be a fertilizer tank. And this is a little bit bigger. So, maybe I'll remove one of the supply containers, because we really don't need more of those just yet. Okay, we will still have to hope that I didn't have a brain freeze with anything to do with this. Alright, now will it close? Okay, now it looks fine, closed. I hope it doesn't interfere with the egg at all. Alright. I think this is good to go. Let's save and we'll launch this. Alright, here we go. Throttle up. SAS on. And everything seems to be in order. We're just going to the moon so we don't have to worry about inclination or anything. Right, here we go. Alright, looking good. The thud engines do gimbal a lot, though. 
Okay. So that's the bottom portion. And we can open the doors now. And why don't we have these engines ignite at the same time as the decoupling? So let's throw all down. And separate. Separate. Okay, we don't need to go up anymore. I'm seeing whether we can watch the other one actually splash down or land. The first stage, I mean, instead of just relying on stage recovery. Okay, we should um, ditch the egg. Make sure to egg the orbits. So let's have it deorbit like that. And uh, let me make sure we have all our communication out. And we can uh, point retrograde, release it retrograde. Decouple node. And go back prograde. And ignite. We have six minutes till apoapsis. Um, I don't see our other stage anywhere. Maybe it's listed as debris. Smith cycler. Oh, there we go. Supply. Uh, let's switch to that. Oh, did I forget to put a controller on it? It might it might be that because it's a it's debris. It might be that stage recovery has to handle it, so I can't focus on it. Yeah, it's it doesn't have a doesn't have a controller on it, so it's not like it can do anything. All right, we'll just let stage recovery handle it, and let's see where the moon is. Maybe we can just go straight there. Um, it's close. Just a close approach we find in five hours. That's okay. Let's do that. Uh, come on, get out of map mode. And forward. Once we have our, our encounter, we will launch something else. We'll probably launch that Minmus probe to fulfill the contracts. So for those who might be wondering about our interplanetary missions that we would like to do, Jewel in 66 days, Duna in 111 days, so we'll have to get some interesting craft ready for both of those. We already have a Duna contract, and, but that's just for an oral survey, so that's just a science mission. And we've just got a message, and it looks like the first stage has been recovered with the skipper and three thuds. So no worries there. Okay, encounter forming up, and let's see. All right, that'll do. And let's add an al oops, add an alarm for the SOI change. We have to make sure that once we get into the SOI, we tilt our orbit so that we can land at the base, of course. But everything seems to be all right here. Let's launch that Minmus probe. All right, so what we have here is the little brother surveillance camera. Uh, we've got the multi-spectral sensor, which was required, and it also the contract also required the solar particle collector. I decided to put the oral telescope uh, RPWS antenna on as well. I forget if we've put that on for a Minmus probe before, maybe. Maybe our other Minmus probe already has it. I put a goo container here because it's counterbalancing the antenna there. I, I'm wondering whether I should put a docking port or maybe two so that we could refuel this probe and send it off to somewhere else, but it hardly seems necessary. I just got a spark. I mean, of course, you know, the probe stuff. It is a 35,000 fun probe. But, yeah, I mean... Maybe we should just make like a master probe and then refuel it and then send it to all the other places. But for now, I'll settle for this, mainly because I want to test out a thing. Um, we have launched this flyback booster before, but I relied on on stage recovery to see whether it would be recoverable or not. Um, it doesn't have any parachutes, so it really has to fly back. 
and this time I want to test it out actually flying it. So it's going to toss our our upper stage and the probe to a great height so that we have enough time and we need at least a minute and 25 seconds to burn this LV T45 and make sure that the payload gets to orbit and after that we will turn back to this and try and land it. So that's the plan. Whether it works or not, I, I, I'm not going to be too bothered if this ends up in a really high orbit, uh, whatever is most convenient. I'm really interested in seeing this this whole flyback booster thing at work. I'm pretty sure it's going to not work out very well for us, but it'll be interesting to find out. So that's the plan. The reason I used the LVT-45 up there is so that we could uh, get to orbit quickly. And that definitely guarantees it. We should have lots of Delta V. In fact, as it is, the the scanner, uh, I've called it the spy satellite, can easily transfer to somewhere else afterwards. Uh, the the LVT-45 stage will probably be able to transfer it over to Minmus. Okay. Okay, here we are, and of course with the aerodynamic surfaces on this, it might be a little bit tough to control, we'll see. It's not currently rolled in the direction I would have liked. We are going to be launching sort of steeply, so because we want this to be able to return to the runway very easily. Okay, here we go. Let's quickly do the roll so that it is oriented properly. Okay, that's done. Okay, it's tilting the wrong way. No, don't do that. There are some vibrations here. Oh, the payload is a little bit tall, isn't it? And it's sitting on a spark engine. Maybe we should throttle down through the dynamic pressure and all. accelerate so much. Yeah, you can see the fairing on top is wiggling quite a lot. And also the LV T45 isn't exactly a wide engine base. If we get to a good apoapsis, I won't necessarily keep this stage burning. That way we'll have some fuel left over in order to boost back. Okay, that's good enough. 100 kilometers. Let's get rid of the fairing. Okay, that's pretty good. And let's separate the second stage. And second stage engine go. The first stage should still be coasting up. We would like to start to boost back now, of course, because uh, it's just getting further and further away from the KSC. But let's take care of our payload first. Get the antenna out. It occurs to me I forgot to put solar panels? Uh-oh. That's a really stupid thing to do. Oh man. Well... <laughs> That's very derpy. I wonder if I don't think the spark engine generates power, but the LV now nine. Uh, I'm sorry, LV T forty five might. Probably does. But it doesn't look like we have the delta V that I thought we would have with this stage. Looks like I was so focused on trying to test the flyback booster. Neglected this a bit. Okay, we are in an orbit. Uh, obviously, we can't do that. Flyback booster. Well, uh, we might be switching to one of the fairing pieces. Uh, any chance we could switch to? Yes, there we go. Well, since we 
practically sacrificed our probe in order to do this. Let's do this. Uh, retrograde. Let's get MechJeb on this. Uh, I want to see landing guidance. KSC pad, I guess. We can't pick the runway. Not bad, 87 kilometers. We do have locked uh, liquid fuel for the jet engines. Okay, we should be going past the KSC now. Mm, which orientation? We sort of got fin. Okay, I think it's like this is the correct orientation. And we're going to point down. We're going to be very dart like here. And I'm going to now move all the fuel up front for center of mass reasons. I mean, center of mass in front of the center of lift reasons. I think that would be the best thing to do. I forget about the peculiarities of this design, though. I'm not going to move the ones in those pods because that's too tedious. Okay, now deploying the wings. Uh, that wasn't what I expected for deploying the wings. What just happened? Oh, unfurl, maybe. Yeah, unfurl, unfurl. Okay, we now have wings. Uh, let me reset the camera. The center of mass should be here. So that might be a little bit far in front. Looks like deploy was for the control surfaces to act as flaps. Now I'm going to shut off our non-air breathing engines and get ready to ignite our air breathing one. When we have air, of course. So we will have to do a U-turn in order to hit the runway. This is for safety's sake, because otherwise we might uh, damage precious property. Uh-oh. Oh, uh, this is communication blackout region. I see. Well, that does complicate things, doesn't it? The plasma is not helpful right now. Uh-oh. It might be hard to... Okay, now we have communication. Okay, um, alright, yes. Pull up, pull up. Don't break apart, though. Okay. I tried to ignite the panther. Uh, let me activate it like this, then. Okay, throttle up. We don't really need this window. Okay, this is good. This is good. Um, we have to try and turn around, though. Seems like we've got plenty of fuel. But we don't have that much electric charge. It's replenishing, though. Okay. Um, yeah. We're going down, but we're losing velocity. Okay, um, maybe some more, yeah, rocket power would be good. I feel like rocket power would be good. Whoa. Hmm, judicious use of rocket power may be necessary for flight here. We aren't, uh... Maybe I should move some of the fuel back after all. Because I'm not feeling it right now. I'm feeling like it wants to nose down perpetually. I don't know what our stall speed is. That's, that's looking better. Yeah, moving the fuel back definitely helps. Okay, gear down. 
I wonder if moving the oxidizer in here will be better too. We've got stable velocity, but yeah, it's uh, obvious that becoming lighter would be a good thing for this particular craft. In other words, igniting those rockets again to burn off some of the oxidizer. Um, let's let's do a little bit of that. I don't want to go too fast though, otherwise we might approach the runway too fast. So we'll have that as a possibility. Now I want to be in camera locked for flight purposes. Be about that angle. Okay, that makes it clear that we're a little bit too far to one side. Okay. I mean, a pretty good control overall, actually. Nice wings. Uh, we're descending pretty quickly, and we are not getting close to the runway. So... I have no I, I don't remember which pack the extendable wings are from. Maybe stock extensions. Small folding wing. Forget what they were from. Very handy, obviously. Okay. Gotta worry about stalling here. Don't know what the stall speed is. And our runway isn't great. Oh. Oh. Touchdown, brakes, brakes. Oh, we're going to one side, we're going to one side. Oh, we're skidding, we're skidding, we're skidding, we're skidding. Uh, shut down the engines, jeez. Okay. All right, there you have it. Flyback booster does work verifi verifiably. No problems. See, see, no worries. Okay, well, the, the downside is our mission now has not much by way of electric charge. I mean, it has what it has on board and then nothing more. We'll see what we can get done with that. All right, let's recover this though. Okay, and for that we receive 53,000 funds. 100% recovery rate. Good times. Alright, so we have a Minmus encounter in 18 days. I'm trying not to do a mid-course correction. Uh, the angle difference, the relative inclination difference is 9.6 degrees. And so I'm just burning out of one of the nodes in order to hit it instead of Instead of trying to do a mid-course adjustment, that will save us uh, probably a tiny bit of delta V. But it does take us more time to get there. But that's alright. That means we'll have time to do other things in the meanwhile. So the issue, of course, is the electric charge. Our main goal will be to try and get it over there. And uh, if we can get into orbit around Minmus, then we could service it. In other words, we could send a Kerbal to it to slap on the electric, uh, the solar panels, and that'll be fine. As long as it's in a good place, good position to do that. We don't want it in orbit around Kerbin, in an elongated orbit around Kerbin. That's the one thing we'd like to avoid. Incidentally, after passing by Minmus, we could also pass by the moon. It looks like it shoots us at the moon after that, if we didn't get into orbit. And then we would be in interplanetary space after that. So let's try and get into orbit around Minmus. Probably the best thing to do would be to not focus on this after we do our Minmus burn. So we'll go back into the... We'll... Uh, actually, um, there should be a setting here, right? Uh, hibernate in warp. Manual. Um, hibernation off. Hibernation on. Okay, auto. So now we'll hot grenade in warp and we don't have to worry about that. Maybe we can just follow it in that case. Alright, node. Okay, that recharges us. And separation and ignition. This one does not. 
but we can't follow this to its destination right now anyway because we've got the Supply Master 2 to deal with. After landing that booster, that flyback booster, I think uh, I'll probably conclude this episode with uh, getting the Supply Master to its destination. Okay. Well, this one actually brings us back around Kerbin. This uh, flyby Minmus and fly by the moon and come back around Kerbin and shoot us out Kerbin escape on that direction. But. Uh, a little bit. Oh, we might as well get closer to Minmus rather than having all that complication. Okay, Minmus Periapsis 98. And this actually keeps us in orbit around Kerbin, it looks like. So that's beneficial. Just in case. Okay, and let me verify that if we time warp, it goes into low power mode. And yeah, there's either no electric charge draw or minimal electric charge draw. So it should be okay. Okay, we are in Moon SOI and we are preparing to do our maneuver to get into a polar inclination. I really ought to remember when doing my burns for the moon to just go into a polar orientation in the first place. All we need to do is have some inclination with respect to the moon and do the trick. But anyway, it's going to cost us 115.6 meters per second. And uh, we might as well start now, actually. No harm in doing so. In theory, I could do a direct descent thing again, but I, I didn't really feel like that was any better than just getting into orbit first and then heading down. Not with the way I normally land. And I would like to keep enough fuel to bring this one back up. We could bring the other one back up uh, too if we transfer fuel it into it. We have the pipes and all. We are in orbit. Okay, I think I'll take that. 37 by 26, 38 by 26 or something like that. Once I figure out all the all the basic fertilizer type stuff and connectivity stuff, we need to start exploiting resources around here. The reason we have a base on the on the pole is because it was a good place to drill stuff, but we haven't really started drilling all the stuff yet. I hope we don't go past it, jeez. Pretty good burn otherwise. Good timing. We do not have a lot of acceleration with this if you haven't noticed already. Okay, now our target difference is fairly low. We got this vessel in render range and suddenly Georgina, I mean uh, Georgie and Samrina started refusing to work. And then they were went back to duty. This, uh, so, uh, I think even the game is confused about all this stuff. We need to be within 25 meters of something at least to connect the pipes up. I also don't want to land at the base. on the base. At and on is a distinction that we have to make here. Um, man, I can't see my retrograde marker. Oh, we bounced. Okay. We landed near the flag. Not really where I want to be. We're 30 meters away from the base. Okay. Let's try this again. Maybe maybe short hops like that. Oh oh don't do don't do, okay good. Okay, twenty meters it says. That should be close enough.
okay, yeah, let's assume this is close enough and let's start connecting things up. Let me end the program by connecting things up. Now here we have Jeb and Bill, but they're both tourists right now. That's what we're trying to solve. But thankfully, Georgie is still available as an engineer. I was worried when they said that Georgie had decided to become a tourist, but apparently that was a false report. Uh, I don't know if he can reach the inventory box from down here. Yes, he can. Okay. One drill only. Okay, let's go with that. Equip. Let's first connect this to the base. Um, maybe from here. You gotta have a real complex. Well, okay, come on. Complex web of stuff, though. That's a bit worrisome. That we gotta have all these little. Um, connector lines. I was hoping that the new colonization sort of inventory system and the whole 150 meter thing would mean that we wouldn't have to do this. But, well, Jeb and Bill seem to disagree. Link. Okay, Jeb and Bill have returned to duty, so yep. I give them the supplies and they're, they're alright. It's very confusing. We need, we'll probably need a truck so that we can transfer supplies from one part of our base to another. It might be our first rover. So far we haven't done many rover things, but that seems like a logical thing. For, so for our reactor core over there, which, which has its own supplies, we could have a truck bring some of those supplies over to the base, for instance, instead of... Um, right now the base is going to be producing because we've just added fertilizer so it will probably be the other way around the base sending supplies over to the reactor core and maybe the rover since it'll obviously have connector ports and all might be able to winch up the reactor core though that's uh, that's a dangerous proposition all on its own okay now a lot of glitchiness can happen with all these links let's hope that does not happen. Finally, I'm going to put an antenna on the base itself. Um, that's fine. Anywhere will do. Extend antenna. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, let's get Georgie back into the... Nope. Ah. I actually just wanted him to walk off, not use the jetpack off. Okay, back into the reactor core because we need an engineer there, and it'll also save him from losing his electric screwdriver, I think. Hopefully. Okay, there we go. Grab. And board. Okay, EVA successful. Let's check on the base. Look at this. Uh, lots of pipes. Uh, let's see if we can produce stuff. Zero efficiency still, but maybe we should just uh, send the fertilizer directly in. Maybe that'll help. I don't know. It's my best best idea. Let's send it in from this container. Do we need like a scientist to do the agriculture stuff? Maybe we need machinery. We have apparently produced some machinery, or for some reason we have 4.89 machinery in here. It, if, we, if it was lacking machinery, shouldn't it say lacking machinery? Hmm. Oh, there's a little bit of machinery over there. 
I don't think we need the machinery in the hab in the hab section. Okay, Jeb refuses to work. Oh, the hab quarters doesn't need machinery. Okay, sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. They don't like that at all. And also we need to be able to expand the other hab section. That's going to require, um, whatchamacallits, the parts that you expand things with, you know. Uh, well, yeah, so if anybody has any idea why uh, we have zero efficiency on our agroponics, which seems like a bad thing. And let me stop agroponics, start, yeah. Any explanation for this? We do have Bill here, who is in, an engineer, and Jeb here. Let me try and transfer Jeb into this one, and maybe if there's two of them. Nope, even with uh, Jeb and Bill both in the same section, it's still zero efficiency, so if you're wondering about that. So, the question is why? Why zero efficiency? And I'll look forward to your responses. Uh, for now though, everybody seems to be alright. They've got 308 days of supplies and uh, should be generating more of that. And uh, we'll focus on Minmus next time, though that'll be after our Moho scanner reaches Moho. So, I, I think that's reaching Moho or is doing a mid-course adjustment. Yeah. Alright, so on that note, I will say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.